So, not uh, George McDonald, I'm afraid, for the second time in a row. Uh, this is the ocean at the end of the lane. I uh, probably should get my sto my story straight, as it were, with um, the books that I'm reviewing. Of course, there are various various reviews that I, that I, could, that I could do, various books that I could review. Um, this just happens to be the last book that I've read. Um, again, it's a lot easier to review the last book that I read than a book, a symbolic, worldly, mythological book that, that I read quite a while ago. Um, yeah, a lot of reviews that I could do. Just this for now, I'm afraid. Uh, it's a good book, though. Uh, definitely worth your time. The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. So I should preface this by saying that uh, I had never read Neil Gaiman before. I, I had some misgivings about getting into him, really. Um, no fault with him as a person. Uh, actually, he seems like a nice guy, and I've, I watched him on a Lovecraft documentary. Uh, um, he reads a lot. He loves King of Elfland's Door. He Lovecraft, all that sort of stuff. He uh, ticks all the boxes, really. I just, I, I found that his style and his sort of his sort of whole scene was a little bit maybe too YA, sort of coming of age. And this uh, this story is actually it feels like that, but it covers some adult themes. So that's why I thought I'd read it. Uh, it was my first Neil Gaiman book. I usually have this idea that it's maybe a bit snobby or contrarian or whatever, but I usually have this idea that more obscure literary works are sort of better. But this is, this is a good book, definitely. It, just, it has some flaws, but of course I'll go into that. Every book has flaws. Um, so, yeah, this is a really nice edition of this of this book. Uh, came out in 2013, it's a 2021 edition, I believe. Some nice art in here, it's got a nice conversation at the back with Neil Gaiman about some just a little, a little extra really about how it was uh, written and what it means to Neil Gaiman, uh, to Neil. Um, let's see here, nice art there. So what is this book about? Uh, it's really it's a book about childhood and memory really, two main points there. Um, it's a book about uh, growing up in the Sussex countryside, and I, I felt that this was, this must have been autobiographical for Neil Gaiman. I think, I believe, I've not double checked this, but I, you must have grew up in the Sussex countryside, say two farms, or yeah, I think he actually says in the back of the book he, there's two farms, uh, that he grew up beside, and it's correlated very strongly with this sort of imagery. Um, even even one of the stories, one of the characters in this book is the opal miner. Which I'll get to him later on. He uh he features in this book. Uh that that that, that comes from a, a story that he uh, his dad told him, I believe it was. It's in the back of the book. You can f find that out for yourself. Um, it's really a trip down memory lane. Really, oh, that's a perfect way to describe it. Actually, uh, the ocean at the end of the lane. It's about uh, an old man rec recounting and reminiscing about his childhood as, as a seven year old. Uh, all these events that take pl take place. Um, on the Hempstock farm, these three, these two women and a young girl called Letty, uh, so her mother and then the grandmother, old Mrs. Hempstock, uh, who may or may not be magical beings, we're never quite sure. Um, and really, I guess I'll say I'm, I'm going to try and I usually like to do my reviews chronologically, um, sort of structured, but I wanted to skip to say that although I did enjoy this book. Things did feel a bit cliche. This is a, definitely a coming of age story. It's got some adult themes. It's got some slightly subversive elements to it, but it's very much. It feels like it doesn't really break that much new ground, and I'm sort of disappointed because I read this book to um, get like a different viewpoint or understanding or perspective of Neil Gaiman from what my idea of him was. But unfortunately, this does feel like a sort of. A, it could all if it didn't have if it didn't have the sort of darker elements that this book does have it would feel a bit coming of agey and I mean it covers a young boy who reads a lot and um, you'll have a book uh, you'll have um, a book sort of written and icing on his birthday cake and he has a black cat <laughs> a black cat and um, his parents aren't particularly in, in line with his way of thinking, he's an introvert etc etc and he doesn't really fit in where he is and he gets bullied in school so you can see Unfortunately, that's very cliche, and we've done that a, a thousand times over, haven't we? Um, that's a bit disappointing for me, I think. 
especially coming from the books that I, that I read recently, it just doesn't really break any new ground. Um, but that's fine, whatever it is. It's, it's, it's a story well told, I suppose. Um, so really, we begin in, in a prologue where this unnamed narrator is uh, he's an old man now, and he's just attended a funeral service. He's, he's, he's driving around where he used to live and he's sort of pulled towards this ocean, uh, sorry, towards this lane, uh, and his house, I should say, um, his old house, which is then torn down, which has been torn down, uh, and there's like new builds and whatnot. Um, it's not, I guess, I guess it's that archetype or that, that concept of everything not being as it once was. And eventually he ends up, he's pulled towards his old farmhouse, the Hemstock's farmhouse, and he meets old Mrs. Hemstock, um, and everything slowly comes back from there. He he takes a little trip out to the back of the farmhouse to see the old duck pond, which Letty, the young girl who he was friends with during the main course of the narrative, uh, he goes to the duck pond and he remembers so that Letty, Letty Hemstock used to call it her ocean. And that's it. he says at the end of the prologue, I believe, once I remembered that, everything, I, I remembered everything. And that's where the story begins. And really, this is a very meditative, introspective book. Not a lot of action, really. It's very much like a, uh, an account of childhood. Very strong in that regard. Um, very inter inter interesting from the start. Again, it does have those cliche elements, but I did find, my, find myself drawn towards the character. Um, yeah, so we, we have a young boy growing up in a house, reads a lot, gets bullied at school. Um, and then one day the opal miner comes to town. Uh, the opal miner is a South African who I believe came from Australia, had some money issues. Um, and the reason he's here is because the, the parents are come they, they themselves are coming to some money troubles and they've rent, they're actually renting out the old uh the room of the narrator so he has to move in with his sister to his sister's room and everything's sort of changing you can see where this is going everything's not um going well for the the kid he's sort of his it's like an upheaval i suppose uh from there i won't spoil it really the opal miner is a sort of inciting incident for the for the story and something bad happens relating to him uh, and, and and this happens actually near the farmhouse in the lane where the, where the farmhouse is situated and, uh, and from there we meet Letty Hemstock who sort of initiates the young boy into this sort of semi-magical world I suppose um, and really the, the farmhouse is a sort of refuge for the narrator um, and again, the, uh, I try not to give spoilers, but there's a sort of magical incident. He wakes up one morning, and uh, let's see, he actually he, sw he, he wakes up and he has a coin in his mouth. And from there, there's sort of, there's a, there's a sort of money symbolism, uh, some magical elements to do with money, um, and fulfilling people's needs and, and all that sort of stuff. If you read the book, you'll understand what I mean by that. I want to try and keep it vague, though. Um, and really, that's really the way the book starts. So they're trying to Letty and um, the young narrator. They're trying to figure out what's happening, and from there, the book gets really surreal. Actually, I was very surprised. I went, I went into this book blind. I did not, I had no idea what this book was going to be like at all. And from there, Letty, this sort of semi-magical, this young girl who knows what she's doing and she understands a lot more than the young narrator. Uh, she, I should say she's 11 the, the boy's te 7 um, but she might be, actually be a lot older than uh, she appears to be and uh, from there we meet we encounter some strange things here I <laughs> I was surprised by how how surreal it was it almost reminds me more of the Lord in the Mist style of book um, it's not magic systems it's not hard sort of fantasy it's, it's very much uh, if you've read Lord in the Mist you'll know what I mean it's um it's more strange than anything. Um, and without giving spoilers, we meet this uh, this entity that exists from another world, really. Um, and 
there's a lot of symbolism to do with uh, rags and cloth in this book and money and uh, and worms. So there's actually a lot of that's interesting. There's almost there's that comical whimsical edge to this book. Uh, there are puns in this book to do with wormholes and um, it's a very strange book. I, I, again, it's kind of hard to talk about this book with, without giving spoilers. And um, in a roundabout way, I'm trying to say that we have the introduction of the character of Ursula Monkton. And she's, she, she acts as the nanny figure. Um, again, another upheaval. Um, I found this a little bit cliche as well. The the boy doesn't really respond well to the to the nanny, and uh, the sister does. And, and there's a bit of rivalry there as well. Um, so it's a little bit cliche. So from there, really, the conflict develops, and uh, the house, the sort of normality that this this young boy was used to, all, everything changes. It's sort of, I guess, the narrative is sort of split in two sections. Really, we have the house, which is the negative space, and the farmhouse, the Hempstock's farmhouse, and the farm land surrounding it is sort of the refuge. The boy is the boy will not eat his food that the the nanny gives him, or Slumpington. Um, this young woman. Um, whereas in the farmhouse, there's sort of like a cornucopia of uh, a cornucopia, really. It's a, a, like, like almost like a banquet. There's, there's a lot of food imagery in this book. I, I believe it's sort of saying it's the nour- the real true nourishment that this boy is given, um, as opposed to the sort of the. Um, it's a contrast with the the, the house, I suppose, and um, and again the 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 free uh, females. At the farmhouse, they are um, sort of magical fantasy element. They are it's against that juxtaposition between normality, mon- mundanity, and magical existence. I suppose. Um, so really, I quite I quite enjoy. I, I like that sort of thing. That um, again, that that contrast between the real and the fantastical. I suppose. So unfortunately, by the end of the or near the end of the book, the last maybe the last quarter, or just maybe a little bit more than that, I felt that the um the the resolution just didn't sort of come together. Nothing that the characters did really felt earned in a way. I, it was this book is again it's more it's really more about the childhood reminiscences of the the narrator, but there are magical elements to this book and. There are, I'd say, there are, there actually, there are, there are beings that are quite substantial in terms of how fantastical they are, and how they can manipulate the world, and um, so I don't want to give the impression that it's not a fan- fantasy book. It definitely is. Um, however, I'll say that that side of things doesn't feel as it is left very vague, which is good in a way, but it's not. No, nothing that the characters do really and, and how they interact with the fantastical element of this book if this makes any sense um it, it doesn't feel substantial to me it doesn't feel like they've really earned the resolution to the book um there are i have to say that there be there are beings that can um manipulate the humans of this of the real world of earth and there are also beings that can destroy i'll say parts of this world and um the way this conflict is resolved, it's just it's almost like a day sex. I'll say it's almost like a day sex ex machina, really. Um, it felt felt very flat to me. It just a character is used, and that's the end of the book, really. And it, it felt rushed by the end, unfortunately. The beings are such that they're actually they're, they're quite well described in a way. This is going all over the place, but they're quite well described in a way. They are concrete beings and entities that should feel like they should have more like a system behind it, if it makes any sense, if that makes any sense. Um, so in some ways it's contradictory, it's vague and good, but vague but bad. But then it's also contradictory because these beings, you'd fe- it feels like there should be more of a, a struggle with them, is what I'm trying to say. Um, because, they're, because they are so concrete in a way. This probably only makes sense if you've read the book. Um, but again, it's, it is what it is, and it, it it, co- it is coherent in, in, in one way or another, but it felt very flat for me in a way. It's just that Deus Ex Machina type feeling that we had at the end. It's like, oh, 
and they don't the characters don't really go anywhere, and it's all just resolved by it's almost it's almost it feels like a click of the finger really of the fingers, that's what it feels like to me uh, by the end. And I am I'm skipping a lot here actually, in a previous sort of edit I I've took taken this out but in a previous edit, I described the beans and I described who the nanny is and what her symbolism and whatnot but. I probably already said enough, really. Um, I, I I sort of struggle with giving, trying to avoid spoilers and trying to evade more telling details of books, really. So probably just leave it there. Um, it's it's a it's a touching book, and it's again it deals with childhood memories and growing up. And but I felt like I almost felt like you could have done without the the fantastical element of it, and it just doesn't really quite add up. Okay, so I'm actually going to use this episode, first excerpt to highlight that it does have that sort of cliché feeling. Um, for example, Oh, monsters aren't scared, said Letty. And as for, and as for grown-ups, she stopped talking, rubbed her freckled nose with a finger. Then, I'm going to tell you something important. Grown-ups don't look like grown-ups on the inside either. Outside they're big and thoughtless and they always know what they're doing. Inside they look just like they always have, like they did when we were your age. When, sorry, when they were y your age. The truth is, th there aren't any grown-ups, not one in the whole wide world. So you can see perfectly serviceable sentiment, Perf it makes sense, it's probably true on the whole, but that just feels like to me like something that's been said so many times and even some of the language used, the, the child inside the, the grown-up and all that sort of stuff, it's just, I feel like it almost didn't, I didn't have that much to say. Quite a bit enjoyed here. Just to give an, an example of uh, the most of the, the I guess the main sort of content of the book really, on um, how it feels. I don't know what I said in reply or if I even said anything, but I went out of that kitchen although I was hungry without even an apple. I took my book into the back garden beneath the balcony, by the flower bed under the television room window, and I read, forgetting my hunger in Egypt with animal-headed gods who cut each other up and then restored one another to life again. Um, so yeah, it's again, it's really that um, the idea of the sort of um, the bookworm, I suppose. I'm going to scour this uh, excerpt. Really, I'm trying to avoid spoilers. This is just to give you an idea of um, how far this goes. It's not again. There's a lot of fantastical elements to this book. I was holding flesh. I was fifteen feet or more above the ground, as high as a tree. I was not holding flesh. I was holding old fabric, a perished, rotting canvas, and beneath it I could feel wood. Not good, solid wood, but the kind of old wood I'd find where trees had crumbled. The kind that always felt wet that I could pull apart with my fingers. Soft wood with tiny beetles in it and wood lice, all filled with thread-like fungus. It creaked and swayed as it held me. You have blocked the ways, it said to Letty Hemstock. I'll skip some parts. The path is incomplete. The ways are blocked. He completes the path, the path is inside him. So that was the ocean at the end of the lane. Um, hope you enjoyed the review. Um, I was about to say that I, I I wasn't sure how I feel about it in terms of its inclusion on my on my review channel and sort of the backlog. But again, I I probably enjoyed this book more than the uh, occultation short stories by Laird Barron. Really, it's a, it's a perfectly serviceable, serviceable book. Quite enjoyed it. Just the end felt a little bit flat and there's some themes and it kind of feels a bit cliche. So it sort of takes the rating down a little bit. But hope you enjoyed the review. I will be getting back to all the books that I need to... I will eventually be getting to all the books that I need to review. Um, all the good stuff, all the classics and whatnot. So hopefully you enjoyed the review. Cheers.